in talking about thanksgiving uh, allow me to read the text in uh, the book of first Thessalonians when you read first Thessalonians chapter 5 and uh, reading from uh, the verse the verse should be 17 first Thessalonians 5 just listen to what first Thessalonians 5 17 says pray without ceasing in everything give thanks to the Lord for this is the will of Christ, of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Pray without ceasing in everything. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us pray. Loving God, convict us that we need to pray without ceasing. In everything, we need to give thanks to the Lord without ceasing. Help us that we may understand this. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've always asked myself, but, but, but surely, how, how possible and practical is it to just be able to look at adversity in the face, look at challenges in the face, and then continue to sing to God be the glory, great things he hath done. How possible is that? How possible is it for, for, for you to sit somewhere and, and, and things are not looking right and, and you still find yourself singing anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere he leads me in this world below. How possible is this? How possible is it for us to sing back and sing this song that says, Where he may lead me, I will go, for I have learned to trust him so. When you have a history that in the past few days, you have been finding yourself in trouble. You have been going where he has led you, and you have seen trouble. You become scared when every time you are seeing trouble. But we are confidently singing, where he may lead me, I will go, for I have learned to trust him so. This is tough. It, it is tough when you get to a point and, and the preachers are making it look light and, and they're trying to urge you, let's, let's pray on. Let's trust in God. And, and, and I think, beloved, as, as we are going to pray, there is need to have something that can remind us why we need to continue praying. Because, listen, we are speaking to somebody who is going through a tough time right now. Life is difficult. You have been praying and you, it seems like things are just becoming worse. And I feel like, what does it benefit to pray? Let's stop. Let's leave this prayer thing. So how do you go about life when, when prayer has been your portion, you have prayed over and over, and it seems like life is not getting better? But remember the text that said, in everything, give thanks to the Lord. It didn't say in good times. Romans 8.28 has always been an encouraging text that, and we know that all things work together for the good of they that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. And we know, this is one thing we are sure of, we know that all things work together for good. In fact, Paul writes in the book of Romans and says that in all these things we are more than conquerors. When things are tough, we are more than conquerors. Why are we more than conquerors? Because we've trusted in the Lord. And so when I say, and we know, when I say all things work together for good, when I say that we need to keep our trust in the Lord, we have not trusted in cunningly devised fables. We have trusted in a God who is sure who can be trusted on. And so as we go through these sessions of prayer, I want to encourage us. There's need to give thanks to the Lord. There's need to praise God. Even when things are tough. We don't just live for God when things are good. Let me tell you. Praising God when things are tough is no spiritual maturity. Praising God when things are good is common sense. That, 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 one, that, that one anyone can do. But when things are tough, let me tell you, the difference between the serious child of God and, 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 the, and the common place one is how do you react when things don't go your way? 
When you have committed this to the Lord in prayer and it seems like the answer is always on the negative. Things look to be tough and yet you've committed your life to God in prayer. What do you do? Remember, in everything, give thanks to the Lord. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I look at the text in the book of Acts. It's, it, it's, it's, been, it's, it's, it's been my classic, my classic sermon. And, and, and today, today, by the way, I'm, I'm just reflecting on sermons I love to preach. It's been one of my classic sermons. I preach it over and over again. In those ubiquitous YouTube uh, videos, you will still find the sermon somewhere. But let me look at power and prayer, and praise, and thanksgiving in this. Turn with me to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 is a common one where you know and we pick so many texts from Acts 16, 1, 2, 3. Today I'm just, I'm just going to the points that matter. I'm just gleaning from uh, the core thing. And let me tell you, in the spirit of gleaning from the core, I, I want to go to Acts chapter 16. And in Acts chapter 16, reading from verses uh, 20, the Bible says, Acts 16, 20. And they brought them to the magistrate saying, This man, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. The multitude rose up together against them. The magistrate rent their clothes off and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them in prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. But listen to this. Who, the jailer, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. You see, when you read that they were thrust into the inner prison, you need to understand that the jailer did not just put them there. The jailer made their life difficult. He, he thrust them and he made their feet fast in stocks. In fact, when I went to read an exposition of this, it says the apostles suffered extreme torture because they of the painful position in which they were left, but they did not murmur. How many of us, when life puts us in a painful position, we murmur? We look like God. Now, now, now look, God, God, look at what you've done. Now look, you've left us. As in, first thing, when, when life just fixes you in a prison corner. The first thing, you start complaining. Can't the first thing be that when you find yourself there, even understand your situation. First thing, God, now look. I'm the only one suffering. Even those, in fact, it's, it's God's children who like saying this, that look, look, even those ones who are sinners are enjoying and us, we are troubled here. We were there for the prayer night and, and yet, Lord, we are still going hungry and those who didn't come for the prayer night are eating. Now, you, you, you had an arrangement with God. Attend prayer night, you eat. Is that your arrangement with God? Or was it like you are bribing God? When, when I pray five times, I am praying five times God so that you can be able to do to me this. So you're like, God, I have done my side of the bargain. You've not done yours. Listen, God is God not because you have food. Even when you die, he is still God. When you are living, he's God. God is not defined by your life. In fact, your life should be defined by God. Well, let me tell you, that's why we say in everything, give thanks to the Lord. When things are tough, listen, the Bible says in, in, in Acts chapter 16, reading from verse 25, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto the God and the prisoners heard them. Now, I love this part. At midnight, when it was dark, were you wondering about us praying through the night? Paul and Silas prayed at midnight. One of the most powerful prayers ever offered was offered at midnight. And we don't want to pray at midnight. 
Some of us, even in the day, we are not praying. In the darkest hour, when things were tough, let me tell you, it's one thing when your life is in a midnight and the reality around you is midnight. That is when you find yourself in prison, that is midnight. But at midnight, when they found themselves in prison, they praised God. Let me tell you, praising God when you're in prison is incongruent. People don't understand. And let me tell you, trusting in God should be so serious that people cannot commonly understand what has happened with him. What has gone wrong with this guy? This guy is praising God and he is, is just from losing his father. He's from losing his mother and he's praising God. This guy is from losing his child. He's praising God. This guy is from losing his job. He's praising God. Listen, you must have a habit of praising God before for you to praise him when you're in trouble. Don't think that, oh, you know, the preacher said in prison, Paul and Silas praise God. Listen, you must have the praise song before you go to prison. Have an experience with the Lord outside prison so that when you're in prison, you continue with the experience you had started with the Lord. Right now, when you are free, praise God. And let me tell you, you can be able to praise him wherever you are. When you are in prison, it will not change you. You will continue with the life that you had always of praising God. That's why we must give thanksgiving. Paul and Silas. In fact, in the book Acts of the Apostles, it, it says, Instead, in the utter darkness and desolation of the, of the dungeon, they encouraged each other by words of prayer and sang praises to God because they were found worthy to suffer shame for his sake. Their hearts were cheered up by a deep, honest love for, their, for the cause of their Redeemer. Paul thought of the persecution he had been instrumental in bringing unto the disciples and he rejoiced that his eyes had been opened to see and his heart to feel the power of the glorious truths which he once despised. In prison, when he was in prison, he remembered, wait, I, I can praise God right now. Let me praise him. When he was in prison, he remembers that God has walked with me in times past. Let me walk for, with the Lord. Let me stand for God right now. In prison, he remembered that. And let me tell you, prayer is necessary. Join together in prayer. When things are tough, come and pray. Let's complain less and pray more. Problem is... Now, let me ask a simple question. Our politicians can irritate you. Why are we complaining about them? Why don't we pray for them? If the president has annoyed you with the decision he has made, why do we complain so much? Why don't we just pray for the president? That some sense may go into the president. Some sense may go into the ministers. Some sense may go into the politicians. Let me tell you something. Let's pray more. In fact, let's even thank God for the fact that we are alive to experience some of these things. There are others who have died. But let me put it this way. The, the Bible says, and I don't want to rush beyond the Bible. It says, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises and the prisoners heard them. They prayed and sang praises and the prisoners heard them. With astonishment, the other prisoners heard the sound of prayer and singing issuing from the inner prison. They were accustomed to hearing shrieks and moans, cursing and swearing, and breaking the silence of the night. But never before had they heard words of prayer and praise ascending from that gloomy cell. The guards and the prisoners marveled and asked themselves who this man could be, who cold and hungry, tortured, yet they could rejoice. In everything, give thanks to the Lord. Let me tell you, when life has beaten you down, when life has imprisoned you, give thanks to the Lord. Praise God. Go forth. And everyone will marvel. Those who are looking at you will say, what do you mean? What's wrong with this guy? How is he praising God in the midst of a pandemic? But let me tell you, what else should you do in the midst of a pandemic? Thank God you're alive. To experience a pandemic. Thank God. You are in the midst and he's going with you. That's why I say. 
Sing with intelligence. Sing with understanding. Before you sing the songs and the hymns that we love singing anywhere with Jesus, you, have, you sang that song last year. So now he has brought you into a fix and you are afraid. But you are the one who sang the song last year. Please, if, if you don't believe in the words of the song, just keep quiet. Don't say anywhere with Jesus and when he brings you to a tough position, you can't praise him. I read. You know, Paul and Silas were there. The jailer, the Bible says, that Paul and Silas praised God. They sang songs. They were praying. And let me tell you something that I have confirmed from the text is that they praised God, they sang God, and, and their praise and worship was so powerful, so good, so nice that it, it calmed the tension in the, in, 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 in the prison until the jailer himself slept. You will read. The, the Bible says in, in verses 27 that the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep. That was good music. Good music. It was so soothing. It was so nice. He was fond of hearing people who are cursing and making noise and, and keeping him awake the whole night. And tomorrow his eyes are red and having sleep bags. But this time round, he had people who are praising God. Let me tell you, a person who is praising God is not going to escape from prison. Because if, if, if he loves God even in prison, it means he trusts that God can deliver him from there. So he's not, he's not even planning to escape. So why are you worried? The prisoner slept. The, the jailer slept. Even the other prisoners were there. Now listen. The Bible says, And suddenly there was a great earthquake. And the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors opened and everyone's bands were loosed. Let me tell you, if you praise God, it will cause an earthquake. When you praise God, praising God leads to an earthquake. Praising God will open prison doors. Praising God will do things that are marvelous. Praising God is the best thing that we can ever do or think of doing at any point in time. Let's praise God. I will tell us, let's learn to praise God. Because when we praise God, God comes in to prove that he is there. God comes in. Let me tell you, praise calls for the presence of God. Praise says, my situation is tough, but God, you can come in and sort it. That is praise. That's why we sing songs of praises to remind us of that. Let me read for you a quotation. Read the text and then close with prayer. Listen to what the quotation says. But while men, this is Acts of the Apostles, page 215, paragraph 1. But while men were cruel and vindictive or criminally negligent of the solemn responsibility devolving upon them, God had not forgotten his faithful servants. God had not forgotten to be gracious to his servants. And let me tell you, God will not forget you. He will remember his faithful people who are praising him. And God had not forgotten. All heaven were interested in the men who were suffering for Christ's sake. And angels were sent to visit with them. Let me tell you, every time you praise God, all heaven is watching. All heaven is attentive. And let me tell you, when God's children are suffering, even the angels are amazed. Angels are asking God, God, what can we do? These people are saying that you're powerful. These people are saying that you can deliver. God, just tell us what we need to do. And let me tell you, when you read the story of Paul and Silas, it says in Acts of the Apostles 2.15, paragraph 1, that all heaven was interested in the men that were suffering for Christ's sake. Angels were sent to visit the prison. At their tread, the earth trembled. When the angels stepped down the earth trembled and when the earth trembled the heavily bolted prison doors were thrown open the chains and the fetters fell from their hands and the feet of the prisoners and a bright light flooded through the prison that was the earthquake let me tell you if you can praise god there is going to be an earthquake god is going to shake the things that have imprisoned you and let me tell you he will set you free he will set you loose let's give thanks even when it is tough, 
When it is good, let's give thanks. When it is tough, let's give thanks. You know why? The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, Be anxious about nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known unto the Lord. Make your requests known with prayer and thanksgiving. May God bless us as we spend more time thanking Him rather than complaining a lot. Our prayers should not only be asking God, God, give me this. God, give me this. God, why have you not done this? God, why have you not done this? Let me tell you, our prayers should also be filled with thanking God. God, I thank you that I am alive. God, I thank you that I am able to suffer. God, I thank you that I am able to succeed. God, I thank you that I am able to have a good life. God, I thank you that I am able to preach in this time. God, I thank you that I am able to even hear you speak to me through your man servant. God, I thank you. Just thank God. Let's pray. God, we thank you because you're God. We thank you because you are the only one who is worthy of praise. So God, as we give our thanksgiving prayers to you, as we open our hearts to thank you, I ask you that God, may you impress our minds that we need to always thank you. If I can say anything, God, I will say, I thank you for being God. We could never have had, we could never have had a better God than you. So God, thank you. Thank you because even when you allow us to go through certain circumstances, it is for our good. So I thank you. When things are good, God impress us to thank you. When things look bad, impress us to see the good that you can make out of the bad things that are happening to us. And we thank you for that. God, may you be praised. May you be lifted on high is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you safe. Thank you. Thank you.